In this video, I'll teach you how to compute the mean, median, mode, standard deviation, and variance using Google Sheets. This covers section 3.1 and 3.2 from the textbook. So first, I've started with a spreadsheet with some sample data that I gathered from some of my students. And across the top, I've put down the calculations that you're probably going to be using in these chapters, uh, means and medians and modes, sample and population, standard deviations and variances. And I did give you briefly some of the symbols for those uh, calculations, like the sample mean is X bar, but if it's a population mean, it's mu. And then down here with the variances, sample variance is S squared, population standard deviation, sigma. I don't have the symbols there, but that's the word that we're using. And then in this third row, I've given you the formulas for how to calculate all those statistics. So we have Google Sheets available to us, so I am using this program, but it works similarly in Excel. There's also other programs out there, but uh, this one just seems to do the job for me today, so here we are. I started by making a histogram of one of our variables, how many pets do you own? And I want to talk a little bit about those calculations, the mean, median, and mode. Those measure where the middle of the data set is, and they each have their own little different flavor. So the mean is a calculation. You add up all the numbers and then divide it by your sample size. We're probably familiar with that. I want to bring in the word resistant because the mean is not resistant to any outliers. So if you have any extreme numbers, large or small, the mean is going to use those numbers in its calculation, which in turn, if there are outliers or crazy small or large numbers, the mean is going to reflect that. So I can see in my histogram here that there are two students who have, looks like five pets at their house. and. It seems that the pattern of pets is there are a number of students with zero or one pet, and then it kind of tapers down, and then it picks back up here at this five. So I suspect that the mean is going to be pulled a little bit to the higher side because of these multiple people with more pets than this cluster down here, which has a few number of pets. You'll probably also notice that when we have extreme outliers, that the mean is really pulled in that direction because of those extreme values. Five may not be that extreme, but it will have a little bit of pull towards this right side, towards that larger value for the mean. <clears throat> so the way that I calculate the mean is I type equals and then average, and you'll notice that pop-up boxes show, so you can kind of pick your function, and you can tell if you're spelling it right. So equals average, start with a parenthesis, and then you just go through and you highlight where your data is. So I am highlighting cell A2, and then there's a colon that is popping up. It tells me that I'm starting in cell A2, and I'm going all the way through cell A23. I release, close my parenthesis, push enter, done. And you probably noticed that 1.45 was showing up ahead of time. So here we have the average number of pets. It looks up to be about one and a half pets um, per student. And yes, you can't have half a pet, but an average is telling because it's saying that it's not just one pet, it's just not two pets in the family, it's one and a half. So it's kind of between the two. And if you have a decimal place, it can tell you which direction you're leaning towards more. Another way to look at the average is when you highlight your data, if you look down in the bottom corner of the window here, there's going to be a function that's automatically doing stuff. Right now, for me, it's the sum, but if you click on this little down arrow, it's very tiny, you can choose which statistic you want to automatically be computed. So if I clicked on average, that means that even if I just highlight the data and do like nothing else, I'll get the average. So here I am highlighting a different column and down in the bottom corner it's showing me the average. So 29.5 is the average number of teeth that students have. <clears throat> Same thing if I look here with miles is your birthplace from college. The average is almost a thousand miles from college. So um, that's how to type in the average. And if you want to 
uh, repeat that, just keep going, equals average, go to your next column like that, close your parentheses, and then you can get all those means. Now the median is not resistant, uh, sorry, it is resistant to outliers. So that's why we like the median, because if there are extreme outliers, the median doesn't care, because it only looks for the number that's in the middle of the data set after you sort it. You can actually kind of tell what the median is going to be by looking at a graph, because if you know your sample size, let's see, so that's a height of seven, seven, so now we have 14 students, plus another four, so we're at 18 students, 19, 20, 21, 22. We have 22 students here in my sample. So the middle, half of 22 is 11. So that means that looking at the median, 11 students are below the median and 11 students are above the median. So if I can figure out where student in 11 and 12 are, then I can figure out where that median is. So uh, I'm looking between numbers 11 and 12. So I have to count up and find the 11th person and the 12th person, and then that will tell me where my median is. So I go to my first column, say that's seven people. Now I go to the next column and start counting. So I already have seven. This is the eighth person right here, ninth person, 10th, 11th. Okay, so my 11th person has, uh, two, let's see, one pet, I think that's right. And then my next person, is in the same bar and if they also have just one pet that means that the median is going to be one let's check it out equals median go to my data set and the median is one and notice that i didn't need to sort the data the computer will do that for me so if i want to now work on the median of medium miles from college so median, how many miles were you born from your college? The median distance from a student's college and their birthplace is 31 miles. Now granted, there are some people who are born 5,000 miles away from college, 6,000, almost 7,000 miles away from college, but there are a lot of students who were born really close to college. So when we look at the number that falls in the middle, it is 31 miles from college. And we can keep on going with all of our statistics here. So the mode is what number shows up the most. Equals mode. I'm going to go with the pets example. So the mode number of pets. Now, this is kind of a tricky one because if there's multiple modes, then it may not show it. It'll just give you one of the modes. So if you've graphed your data, this is awesome because now you can say, oh, actually there's two modes, it's zero and one. I'm gonna try something else now though. Equals mode, and I see this here, mode.molt. Let's check it out. I'm gonna highlight my pet data. Push enter. Ooh, that was cool. So it actually filled in two things. It filled in a zero and a one for me. So it looks like it knew that there were multiple modes. Let's try it again on the teeth data. Equals mode dot molt. Let's see, I'm hoping that we see a number that makes sense for the number of teeth that you have. Oh, it looks like 28 came up the most. So even though I saw some 32s in there, it looks like 28 is the most common number of teeth. All right, let's keep moving on. Sample standard deviation and sample variance. So if the mean, median, and mode talked about where the middle of the data set is, looks like for the pets, one and a half about is the mean. So it looks like the six or the five or the six pets was being pull was pulling up the mean because the median and the mode were both one so everything kind of falls in this column except for the mean which is a little bit higher because of those extreme values there the sample standard deviation is going to look at how much variety there is to these numbers so what is the dispersion if you were to describe how diverse these numbers were 
that's what the sample standard deviation does. So I'm going to calculate it first equals st uh, stdev dot s s for sample. So sample standard deviation of the number of pets that you own. The answer is 1.6 about. What this means is that on average, uh, the number of pets that we own is about 1.6 1 pets from the mean. So if you know the mean, that was about 1.5. It's about right there on the graph. The average number of pets varies from this mean, you know, on a number line, one and a half, by 1.6 pets. So the, the idea of the sample standard deviation is that you can start comparing data sets, and if there's more dispersion, then more variety to the data sets, then the standard deviation is going to be larger. So I keep pointing at these axes here, and the standard deviation is talking about the variety of these numbers down here on the x-axis. It's not a variety of how tall are these bars. It's looking at, okay, we have lots of zeros, and we have a number of ones, and lots of twos, etc. How much variety is there right here? Because there are a lot of numbers that are close to the mean, 1.5, it makes the standard deviation smaller, but when you have a few large numbers, then it makes the standard deviation larger because on average, there's a few numbers that are pretty far from the mean, which boosts up that sample standard deviation. The sample variance, it's used in some places, but the idea is that you take your standard deviation and then you just square it. So raise it to the second power. The thing that's sort of annoying about the variance is that the units don't make a lot of sense. So if our data is in how many pets you own, so it's five pets, six pets, a variance has a, a units of pets squared. So if you know what a pets squared is, that's awesome, but it doesn't really make a lot of sense if you're talking about animals. So the variation is a calculation used for a, like a stepping stone to get somewhere else. But if we want to really talk about meaningful units, we talk about standard deviation um, on average, how many uh, units are you from the mean. Population, similar calculation, but if our data is from a population, like this is exactly how many students we have in class and we're only talking about our class, then the population standard deviation makes sense. Because I knew I took a sample from a big giant list, this is just a sample of students. It's not the population. You can also be clever and decide, well, what is your population? If your population is only your class, well, then that's your population. But if you decide maybe my class is a random sample of people from across the college, then we're talking about a sample. Okay, so the formula for Google Sheets is equals stdev dot p, p for population, and then you highlight your data. Close parenthesis, push enter, and you'll notice here that the population standard deviation, it's very close to the sample standard deviation, but the sample will always be larger because if you have a population, you know exactly your data set and that is your population. A sample is there to estimate a population. So it's trying to estimate this 1.52 theoretically, and it's going to do a bad job because it's a sample. It's implied that it's not going to be perfect. So it has a little bit larger variety to it. So this will always be the case. Sample standard deviation is always just a little bit larger than your population standard deviation. Now, of course, if your units are different, that's a whole other ballgame. I do want to look at the uh, standard deviation of our miles from college and notice that the standard deviation is really large because there's a lot of variety to this data set. So more variety, more dispersion, your standard deviation is larger. So I hope that helps you get started with Google Sheets and doing calculations quickly by calculator.